ladies and gentlemen, Smith and Smith. It's not what he's eating that makes him grill. It must be what's eating him. I said, don't let it get you down. 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 It's almost a crime to be man and wife. You're out of circulation, you're sentenced for life. Handcuffed, domesticated, stuck in your house. You take it off. Good morning, Mr. Jarvis. We're Mr. and Mrs. Betty Tomlinson. This is my husband, Bert. We heard that you were a marriage counselor and we came to see if you could fix our marriage. You got a gun? Don't start, Bert. We both came here for help. I didn't. I came here for justice. As soon as this jerk tells you to shut up and get off my case, I'll be satisfied. I'll get off your case when you get off your dust. He hasn't had a job since our wedding day. I don't have to work. I'm your prisoner. This is a marriage, not a prison. It'd be exactly like a prison. You could cook better. This is what it's like all the time, Mr. Jarvis. Bert criticizes everything I do. Then I get mad and fight back. But I think, really, I think that way down deep inside, we care about each other very much. How deep? A way down deep. I may be shallower than you think. But Bert, you know it's true. We've got so much. I mean, so many fond memories, adventures we've shared. And we don't have any sex problems or anything. We don't. Oh, Bert, don't you think we're pretty compatible in that area? I can't remember. It was just last year. It was? I must have slept through it. Why not? You do. Here we are bickering again. And you know, we've come to you, but we have tried other solutions. We took a holiday in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, I went to the wrong islands. She was on the same one as me. We uh, joined a curling club. Bert threw rocks at me. She had a broom, why didn't you fly away? Why do you talk like that? I'm still attractive. Flies don't count. You're not exactly first prize, you know. Listen, sweetheart. After 20 years, I've still got it. Maybe you should take stronger medication. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Stronger medications. All right. Come on, honey. Let's get out of here. Oh, Bert, we've been so silly. <laughs> I know that you didn't mean that about... I mean, I didn't mean that about the medication. No? And I know that you didn't mean it about the flies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. The 
It strengthens their will, it sharpens their wits. Neither one wins, but neither one quits. So don't let it happen to me and you. Let's cooperate on everything we do. We can be happy in every way. You just have to do what I say. people are asking me all the time what is my favorite fishing spot and I thought that this week I'd uh, I just let the cat out of the uh, well wherever it is that they keep cats uh, and I got her all on film here and why don't we just roll it and we can talk about it and uh, I'll show you where old red loves to fish I'll get I'll get my staff to roll it you want to roll the film When you're picking a uh, fishing hole, what you want is uh, something that's kind of quiet and secluded uh, where nobody's going to bother you, you know, uh, kind of a restful place too. Don't forget, this is also for relaxation. Uh, it's a wonderful thing about fishing. Uh, it's enjoyable and relaxing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this, uh, golly, this, uh, this spot that I've chosen here, uh, you know, it's amazing. It's not really all that all that secluded, I guess, but uh, in all the years uh, I've been there, I've never seen anybody else fishing. Uh, I, I can't figure that one out, but uh, once you get yourself set up, of course, you gotta start casting and uh, just get a feel for it. You reel her in, just not too fast, you know, kind of slow and steady. Most dangerous thing about casting is the back swing. Now, when you swing that back, you got a hook on that. You got to remember that because if you're not too careful here, like, see, I got caught my lunch on this, and uh, <laughs> golly, uh, you know, it's not too bad because I know what I'm doing. Uh, I know how to bring it in. Uh, but uh, see, I would never, I would never go fishing with a with a lunch bucket. You know, that would have taken me right into the bay. So I just take the bag with me, and of course, uh, my sandwiches are wrapped up in the uh, waterproof wallpaper. Now another thing you gotta watch, your hands will get wet, you'll be cleaning fish and they get kind of slimy on you, you know. And uh, they're slippery and you, you go to cast and the rod may come right out of your, right out of your hands there. And uh, luckily I'd hooked the lure into my ankle so uh, I, could, I could fish that one back out of there. But these are the kind of things that uh, when you've been fishing as long as I have, you know what to do. But I'll tell you, when you start to get, you get a bite on there and uh, you forget all your problems. It's, uh, it's, well, it's, well, how, well, it's undescribable. Uh, and, and, you know, you never know exactly uh, what you're going to get when you're fishing in this kind of a spot, you know. So I just, uh, I don't have anything in mind particular. I just uh, hope for the best on it there. But, you know, you can, you can, you can always catch something, it seems. Uh, something that you can take home and uh, put on the mantle or put on the wife or whatever you want to do with it, you know. So I do keep my stringer handy and uh, I, of course if that was just a small bottle I would have thrown her back in, but uh, you can keep them that size. Now I had caught my quota at this point and I think the most important thing about fishing is that when you go to take your catch you got to have some kind of a system for pulling your stringer out of the water. Now, uh, someone just starting would probably not be able to do this quite as easily as I can, but you know, when you have different items on the stringer, of course, everything is a, is a different weight. So some things take a little more time, and, uh, 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 and 
other things just seem to pop right out of there. So uh, you just take your time with it. Uh, uh, there may be some water involved, but these things happen. That uh, I'm telling you, it's just no wonder what, what you can come up with there. Uh, uh, they say that uh, these lakes are, are polluted, uh, you know, that you can't catch anything or anything. Well, I'll tell you, uh, these are all keepers. Uh, I, I'm just delighted with the, with the whole darn thing. Had a great day. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, the, the lakes have never been, never been in better shape. And, uh, and I think next week I'm going to go for the Barracuda. Uh, last summer I got the right front fender. So we'll say so long. Keep your stick on the ice. See you next time around. Beautiful. A little understated. Yeah, a bit subtle for you, I think. Look Saint at this. St. Andrews Junior. St. Andrews. New Saint Brunswick, Andrews. though. New Brunswick, not Scotland. Oh. Fancy writing paper. Pink. Yes. Dear Smith and Smith, you seem to get along so well together, you even harmonize well in your songs. Are you really married? How can we be married and get along this well? <laughs> no, we're not. We're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, we're sisters. <laughs> Thank you. That's why I like this so much, I guess. Do we get along that well, really? That is really funny. Well, we're paid to get along. Let's bear that in mind. You know, nobody wants us to come down to the television studio and, and fight or anything. Go a couple of rounds. Yeah. No, we do that at home. Do that at the hotel. Actually, we work so little during the year, you see, that we can afford to get along fine when we're working. It's, you should see us the other 300 days of the year. That's right. <laughs> we have a secret, though, to getting along. We never speak to each other. Uh, there's no arguments. <laughs> no, actually, I want to be honest about this, okay? Fine, be honest. We try to settle our problems as soon as they come up. As soon as some little thing happens, we just get right at it. And then after that, we discuss the problem. And it uh, doesn't seem to be so important then. <laughs> Thanks for your letter, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy! It's oh. my girl, yes. Tracy McKenzie. Well, good luck, Tracy. And I'll certainly give you a call when I'm in St. Andrews. <laughs> Show you what getting along is all about. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, if you have a question you'd like us to answer within reason, we will, <laughs> we will answer it. Just write to us, care of your station, and... It'll be in our mailbox. Tracy, leave a return address on that. <laughs> At this juncture, we wish to spotlight the ancient art of applied matrimony. A chance to take a purely speculative, behind-the-scenes look at the married life of famous people. And who? is our lucky couple this week, Morag. Our lucky couple this week is Mr. and Mrs. Jacques Cousteau. Mr. and Mrs. Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau, and all I know is oceanography. They told me in school I was a fool, my level was under a sea. But I looked so cute in my rubber suit, a facial mask and some hose to boot, down to the ocean floor, jumping off of my yachts, it chills me to the core, and it's awfully hard on my watch. Although I roam when I come home, it's never on a windward heel. It's good to know Madame Cousteau can keep it on an even keel. She's a sailor's whim, dark and slim, her rudder's smooth and her sails are trim. A salty, seaworthy lass, a moor for this old boy. I pinch her on the cheek, then I sail away with joy. This is I brought 
brought you a reef and 200 pounds of snails Electric eels and housekeeping seals and a week for two in Wales I keep you alive and put up with your jive Wet my whistle in a waterfront dive Flippers on my feet Air hose starting to crack Weights attached to my seat I don't need you on my back This is no life for a princess I need ladies for my friends No more fish work, give me incense I want a Mercedes, not the Benz Why the envy, why the greed? How many shrimps does one woman need? Complain, complain this is no life for a princess Harvard grudges, sinking fear No more fish wine, no more print press Haul your gear out of here These are the tanks that I get. Morag's wardrobe supplied by Holly's. Hair by David Church Associates. Honey, what's wrong with that boy? He doesn't do a darn thing that I tell him to do. He doesn't clean up his room. He doesn't do well in school. He's not exactly a bundle of joy. Now tell me, honey, what's wrong with that boy? He's just a kid. He never did anything to make you want to break down and cry. So tell me how. He's upsetting you now, and I'll try and think of the reason why. He wears a shirt, he wears a faded old shirt. That's the way all the kids dress. His hair's a mess, cause it's never seen a comb, and I'll bet he's brought a thousand fleas into our all Honey, what's wrong with that child? He knocked me down last night in the hall. If we don't argue, we don't talk at all. I think the little booger's going wild. Now tell me, honey, what's wrong with that child? I like him fine. I know that he's mine and he's yours, so you better keep cool You're gonna find he's got a mind of his own And he'll never be anybody's fool But he's so short, he's lousy at sports Honey, that's just how it goes How about his nose? It's longer than most and he looks so pale He could pass for a ghost Oh, honey, what's wrong with that lad? He goes through the house like a full-scale blitz I'm getting very close to the end of my wits Oh, he's not really all that bad He's just a little too much like his dad ladies. We all give and receive greeting cards for birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, and other special occasions. But have you ever stopped to wonder who writes the messages inside those greeting cards? <laughs> My guest today has written thousands of them. Please welcome Mr. Claus Wondermind. Welcome, Mr. Wondermind. Just a chance to be with you. There's no need to say thank you. For when our friendship's newly born, you and I can go to town and have a happy birthday. Well, thank you, Mr. Wondermind. There is no slave, there is no boss. I'll call you Morag, you me, Claus. Happy day. All right, Claus, can we please have a normal conversation? There's lots of words, there's lots of time, and lots more fun to talk in rhyme. Get well soon. Same to you, Mr. Wondermind. Uh, do you think we could talk in prose? I find your poetry a little hard to take right after lunch. Well, okay, that would be fine. No more rhyming? No Sariti Baba Cats. Terrific. Now, Claus, whatever possessed you to start writing greeting cards? Did you feel a compulsion to do something tacky with your life? <laughs> or did you find that you had a natural talent for artificial sincerity? That's a tough one. 
I think it was more the natural talent for artificial sincerity. I used to practice talking to people after church. Well, Claus, uh, I'm afraid to say that I, I'm, well, I, I have to admit it. I mean, I have to admit it. I'm not a fan of your cards. You don't have to admit it, I don't think. Yes, I do. I find them maudlin and sophomoric. Well, I think that's been true in the past, but lately we've been upgrading our product and getting a little more hep. A little more hep, Mr. Wondermind? Yes. For instance, we have a new line of sympathy cards, and on the front, it just says sympathy. Not our sympathy, or a little sympathy, or a lot of sympathy, but just sympathy. And inside, the message is, too much he drank, too much he smoked, too much he ate, no wonder he croaked. This is a little more relevant, I think. It's definitely more hep. Yes, more hep. Yes, more it is. And we have another sympathy card uh, for when you didn't know the deceased very well. On the front it says, mixed emotions. And then you open it up and it says, oh well, thank God it wasn't me. Thank you, Mr. One, your mind, and good afternoon, ladies. We have a birth congratulation card, and it's got a little baby on the front. You open it up, and it says, you always wanted to do it, you finally did it, and now you've done it. Good afternoon, ladies. Thank you for, thank you for joining us. My deepest thoughts and warmest wishes to all the Judys and Jones and Lindas and Patricias. May all your fondest dreams come true. I like peanut brittle. How about you? Season's greetings. Shut up, Mr. Wonderland.